Invigorate from Newfangled Audio is a plugin that allows you to move smoothly from compression through limiting all the way to overdrive with a whole bunch of additional controls that can unlock some very, very tasty sounds. And if you're wondering how it might be useful in your mix, then this video is really going to help. My name is Damien Taylor. I'm a record producer, a mixer, and songwriter, and I designed a bunch of the settings for Invigorate. So I'm going to walk you through the settings that I designed, explain why I made them, where you might want to use them in your mix, and most importantly, just show you the different kind of sounds that you can get out of this plugin in different settings. Okay, so let's say that you got a good balance on your drums, but you want to give them some more bite, right? Some teeth. So why don't we fire up Invigorate on that bus. We're going to go into the settings folder here, down to Damien Taylor, that's me, and then choose Drum Bus Chewy Midrange. Now I'm going to move the mix all the way over to 100% so that you can fully hear what's going on. And if you look at the radar here, we're blending compression and limiting a little bit more on the compression side. And even though we're not pushing into them that hard, if you check out the level detector here, we have a super fast attack, so that's brutally shaving off all the transients. The release is kind of medium, so that gives us like a really nice pumping up off the tails of those drums. And then the anti-pump is relatively high, so that's making sure that the low end of the kick drums isn't folding in those dynamics processors on themselves. Um, over to curve, and we got a gentle shape and a gentle squash, so the knee is quite a classic S-curve. And then the gate there is doing nothing at all on this one. Now, uh, the input exciter and the output tone are both totally flat, but this is the key one here, right? Sensitivity, we got this pushed all the way up, plus 12 in a narrow band of the mid-range. So this means that the dynamics will be responding to the snares and to all that mid-range percussion. That's what gives us that chewiness, that bite, okay? So remember with all of these, the mixing to taste is really important. Think of these like salt bringing out the flavor in your food. But yeah, that is drum bus, chewy mid-range. I hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna stay with drums for a minute, and this one is for you if you wanna give your drums like more dimensionality, a bit more 3D, a bit more depth. So again, we're gonna fire up Invigorate on the drum bus. We're gonna go to Damien Taylor, that's me. And we'll go down to drum bus open. Uh, so a bit of a different setup this time. We'll move mix all the way to 100%. And you'll notice what's going on here is we're pushing into it way harder. We're leaning almost all the way over to compression. But this time on the level detector, the attack is really slow. So that's letting the, the, the transients and especially the knock of that kick really come through. Our release is quite fast, so we're really bringing up the tails, we're bringing up the air, but instead of like more of a gradual pump, it's that transient, a little clamp down, and then immediately bringing it up. So we're really changing the shape of the drums here. Our anti-pump is at 120, so a bit lower than before. So again, we're not folding over too much with the low end, uh, but it's, it's, it's responding a bit more to the kick. Now the curve, see here we got more shape, more squash, so we're getting quite an unusual, a bit more of an exaggerated knee. Again, not doing anything with gait. Um, our input exciter is still flat. The output tone is still flat. However, this time on sensitivity, we're just pulling down the sensitivity a little bit on the extreme low end. So this kind of works in concert with anti-pump. Uh, they're, they're, they're really just giving it a slightly different shape to how the low end is triggering this. Our mid-range and top end are all letting everything breathe. So again, just a reminder, make sure that you mix to taste, uh, but this one, yeah, definitely will help bring out the openness, the airiness, and the dimensionality in your drums. That's a drum bus open in the Damien Taylor settings. All right, time for a change of pace here. Uh, what about if you have a song based around an acoustic guitar that's a beautiful performance, really nice ebb and flow, but you're finding that you just need to get a little bit more coherence in the mix by focusing the dynamic range, without it feeling squashed. You still want it to feel really natural, but just to help the mix translate across a lot more systems, it needs that focus. Okay, so I built something for you just for that. So we're gonna fire up Invigorate, uh, go into Damien Taylor, and this one is called Guitar Finger Picked Acoustic Thicken. So first off, you might not notice any difference at all, and that is kind of the point, but let me walk you through what's going on here. We'll move the mix all the way to 100%. Uh, you'll notice we have like the shape is all the way over, so we're getting this kind of S-curve that curves around the top, squashes up a bit, but we're not pushing too hard into the compression. Again, a little bit of limiting, mostly compression, uh, but our level detector here, very, very, very slow attack. We don't want to choke any of the attacks, um, any of the transients. We want to keep that natural detail. 
The release is relatively quick, but still natural, so we won't hear any pumping, and likewise we won't hear any, um, any kind of aggressive pulling back, any graininess on that release either. So it's a very nice transparent setting. Anti-pump is up pretty high, um, again, so that when we get accent notes, especially low notes, that they won't shut down the compression. Um, our input exciter is flat. Our sensitivity, we're reducing that sensitivity to the lower notes, although actually this is up quite high, so we're really reducing the sensitivity to the fundamentals. Uh, top end is all the same there. And then on our output tone, we're pushing the mids and the highs just a little bit to bring back some detail. But what happens here is you can see we're doing like, you know, a dB or two, sometimes three gain reduction. And the idea here is that when you just mix that in a little bit, you won't notice it on the higher bits, but that dynamic range will just be lifted up. So the quiet bits will just be a little bit more consistent and again, coherent across the mix. So this one is working if you don't hear it at all, but it will be working when the mix as a whole feels much better. So again, this one is guitar, finger-picked acoustic, thicken, does what it says on the tin. Hope you like it. Sometimes you're doing a mix and there might be an accompanying element that is super cool and you want to hear it, you want your ear to be able to find it, but you don't want it to be fighting with a lead. So it's got to sit in behind, it needs to focus its energy into a really consistent place. And you might want to also bring out some harmonics, but without just like EQing forward some shiny stuff, you know what I mean? So for this kind of a situation, specifically with this electric guitar, clean on the edge of breakup, you can go to Damien Taylor, uh, then go to Guitar Chimey Electric Arp Bite. <laughs> okay. Now this one we're pushing into some limiting and a little bit of overdrive. So, you know, our attack and release, slowish attack, quick release, but it's still a limiter. Anti-pump is just making sure that there aren't any subby low-end frequencies that are overly tripping stuff. We're pushing squash quite a lot harder, so we're getting that kind of interesting lift up on the front of the S. Uh, but really, I just dialed shape and squash to get a tone that felt right. Gate's not doing anything here. Um, our output tone has a tiny, tiny high-end lift to just bring out some of those uh, nice frequencies. The input exciter, we're dropping a bunch of the low mids into the low end. So that's just the kind of the lower parts of the fundamental frequencies won't be hitting the distortion quite so hard. Remember, the input exciter is in the audio chain, so this is going to be shaping what overdrive will be re responding to. Um, similarly, our sensitivity, we're just re reducing the sensitivity on those lower frequencies for the limiter, because remember our point here is we're trying to hype up the harmonics, we're trying to get all that good stuff coming through. Um, as ever, blend to taste. Um, sometimes you might just feel like this spot here, totally dry, um, is sitting pretty well, but you just want to bring it forward. So just push that mix forward and you'll start to feel that cut through. On its own, you won't notice it so much, but trust me, in a mix, this is just a, a miracle. It's so useful, a nice alternative to EQ. Again, we'll be avoiding that shiny stuff because we're bringing up harmonics up, we're bringing up texture, and we're focusing that energy to let you place it really precisely in your mix. So again, that is, uh, in Damien Taylor, Guitar Chimey Electric Arp Bite. All right, I love drums. I can't resist sharing one more with you. So what if you're looking for something really extreme to add some crazy hype to your mix? Well, this one's for you. Okay, so Invigorate again is on the stereo drum bus, uh, and we are going to go to Damien Taylor, and this time we're gonna choose Drum Bus Crispy Deep Fried Limiter. Check this out. Okay, so nothing subtle going on here at all, right? And you can see why. We are pushing on the radar all the way into limiting. Um, our curve, even though the settings are gentle, uh, with that amount of push, we're getting a virtual square wave with just a nice kind of bit of rounded corners there, which gives it a, a, a lovely tone. Our level detector is as fast as it can go on attack and release, so that basically means it's a, it's a different flavor of overdrive distortion here. And we're keeping our anti-pump quite high so that the low end doesn't overly dominate that distortion where we're really kind of leaning into the top end and mid-range harmonics that we're generating here. Our input exciter is flat, and sensitivity starts to get interesting. So a bit of a push across the board, but in particular, a kind of a broad, gentle push into the mid-range, and that's where most of the texture is. That's where most of the information that'll give us those lovely harmonics is situated. But this is where it gets super cool, right? The output tone, 
we're pulling we're pulling down by 14 dB on the low end so that we're not going to be filling up the mix with, with just a bunch of woofiness. And then our top end here, we're just rolling that back and that that's easing back on the kind of like digital harshness, but we've still got plenty of really nice upper information and mid-range texture coming through there. So as ever, blend it to taste. This one's actually really cool if your drum mix has been working well through the whole track and then you just get to one loud section and you just want to push in a little bit more hype, a little bit of subliminal kind of chili in the sauce, or you can actually use a lot, lot more in a quieter part of the song, but then sit the drums back. That's a really nice tip as well. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoy this one. That is uh, in the Damien Taylor settings, Drum Bus Crispy Deep Fried Limiter. We got a really tasty fuzz guitar here. It's just a single noter doubling the bass an octave above. Um, I really love what the pick attack is doing. The texture on this fuzz is fantastic. And we just really want it to like hold in place to provide some energy, some vibe for the track. But we know that if we push it up too far, it's gonna take up too much space. So we really just needed to hold in there and kind of bubble and drive the track along. So for this situation, I made a setting. We're gonna go into the Damien Taylor ones here and choose guitar, fuzz, chug, enhance. All right, let me put the mix all the way to 100 so you can hear what's going on here. A uh, blend of compression and limiting, hitting it reasonably firmly, slowish attack so the compressor will be letting through that lovely pick attack stuff, a fast release so that we're bringing up all of the kind of harmonic bubbliness, all that 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 uh, tasty gooey stuff on the back end of the fuzz, and because there's a limiter blended in there, that's going to be responding a lot more quickly and adding an extra degree of energetic focus in behind. Uh, just a nice gentle natural S curve over on the curve with the shape of the squash. We don't need gate to do anything in this particular case. And you'll see that on sensitivity, we're just reducing the low end sensitivity of fraction. Actually on that note, anti-pump is making sure that there's no subby stuff, you know, some of the kind of the uh, cabinet thunk or whatever that might be triggering the compressor otherwise. So we're keeping that low end clean again for that mid range and excitement to stay focused. Uh, the input exciter, we're just lifting the top end a little bit and on output tone, we're pretty flat. So yeah, with these ones, blend them to taste. Often this stuff can work well if totally dry, it's just sitting at a level that's pretty good and you just push these forward and that'll just start to bring out a little bit of the sizzle. Uh, as we were mentioning before with the arpeggiated guitars, uh, if you're just A-being these in solo, you won't notice the difference too much, but what really helps a mix pop is how things relate to other elements in the mix. So this one, for a dense mix, it's really nice just for control and where you can really, really focus that energy, focus that vibe in a very specific spot. So again, uh, that was in the Damien Taylor settings, and this one is Guitar Fuzz Chug Enhance. So I'm sure by now you have got some serious gears turning in your mind, right? A lot of ideas because you've seen Invigorate in so many different contexts, getting really different results, very different colors and very different sounds. So you can go and grab it now if you want to try it in your own mixes. There's a link down below. And if you'd like to hang out with me on a really extended deep dive into Invigorate, I made a video where I talked about the design philosophy, uh, really broke down what all the controls do, and also talked a lot about the philosophy of mixing and how to bring more energy and excitement and hype and engagement into a mix. There's a link right here where you can check it out.